Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. I know you want to know. Hey, everybody, it's Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today, we're talking all about style. Do you have it? And how to get it. And we're talking style with a capital S, that often elusive something that's hard to find, but obvious when you see it. So we'll give you some things to ponder to decide whether you currently have style for your interiors and tips on how to get it or get it even better. You know, Kelly, obviously we talk about a very visual subject on an audio only platform. (laughs) So I'm used to, I mean, we're both used to talking about things that we can't really see. Interestingly enough, because it is something that you can't really necessarily put your fingers on, maybe it's good, just as like it's been since 2017, that we're talking about something that they can't actually see, but they'll take their words in and think about it. And then we're going to give resources and some style icons to check out. If you don't know them already, there will be a couple of women that we talk about towards the end of the episode that you're definitely going to want to explore and just get inspired by their personal style for their interiors and just their entire ways of life. So again, we're talking about style with a capital S. It's not whether you're traditional or mid-century modern or farmhouse or what have you. This style is the ability to put things together in such a way that it defies a particular look, but it expresses you and it has that special something What did the French say, Anita? The je ne sais quoi. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say it was it was right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Right. I mean, looking at the definition, uh, the thing that I found that kind of resonated with me a few definitions here is a distinctive manner of expression, the state of being popular, fashionable elegance, and beauty, grace, or ease of manner or technique. Ooh, that all sounds so good. I want to be all those things. And I'm going to say right from the get-go, girlfriend, you've got style in your home, in your interiors, in your just way of living, in your teacup and silver spoon, in the way that you put a vignette together. Your entire life is curated beautifully. And it feels like it's effortless when I'm looking at you and watching what you do. Well, thank you. I thought you were talking about the listener at first until you started mentioning teacups. I thought, wait a minute. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) But uh, back at you, I mean, with your beautiful florals and your fabulous garden and outdoor spaces and uh, gorgeous Victorian home. And the beauty of style is you don't have to have my style. You don't have to have Kelly's style to be in style. You just need your own style. And that's the beauty of this. It really is we are really talking about your own personal style exactly. that's specific to you. And we really encourage you to develop your own style that is not a copy of somebody else, but is specific just to you. Exactly. Not only is it the beauty of it, it is the heart of it. You have to put your own mark on it. You can do this. And I bet so many of you are already doing it, but Maybe you don't even know you're doing it. So take a step back and take a look. But I think at the heart of having true style is having confidence. Because sometimes when you are developing your style, in fact, all the times when you achieved your style, you need to go out on the ledge a little bit. You need to take some risks. You don't want to look like you went to Target and bought everything from Magnolia Home or you went to Home Goods or anything like that. You want to make it absolutely your own. And sometimes that's a little scary. And sometimes you're not sure if it's going to work out. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't. And that's okay too, because you're going to learn from that. 
So confidence. I want all of you to have confidence in what you're doing. And no, if if it doesn't work out, you can laugh it off and hopefully it didn't cost you a lot of money, but you're going to learn from it. And you're going to get confidence by doing a lot of things that we're going to talk to you about doing today. But initially, when we're saying, do you have style? how to get it, there's some questions to ask yourself. And very simple, like three questions. Am I copying someone else? Have I taken some risk? Do my interiors reflect me, my personality, and the personality of the people who live there with me? So if you're answering to that quiz, no, yes, yes, you've probably got style already. Absolutely. And Another thing I want to talk about is a misconception about this whole concept, and that is some people are born with it, and if you don't already have it, it's too late. So sad. (laughs) That is so not true. And I learned that when I used to do charcoal drawings. I mean, the only way you improve is by continuing to draw. You're not going to get better at anything unless you're doing it over and over and over again. I mean, I really think of it like a muscle Uh, You're not going to get stronger unless you're using that muscle over and over again. Now, we're not all going to be Olympic athletes. Uh, I gave that up a long time ago. (laughs) I want to go back to the chalk drawings. I didn't know you did chalk drawings. And now that I know you were possibly going to be an Olympic athlete. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, I was never. Well, let me back. I was never going to be. You were kind of kidding about that. But that's funny. You should say that. Total aside. I was thinking last night as I'm falling asleep, I'm like, you know, there's so many things in life that you've done that you you may still do, but there's a few things that you know. I, as I'm falling asleep, I, I know I'll never be an Olympic athlete. Like that ship sailed. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, you know, when I was a figure skater, I could jump on one side, but the other side, I could. Okay, jump. wait a minute. Wait. Like so I, you were a figure skater? <laughs> I, yes, of course I was a figure skater. Of course you were. <laughs> I had a great outfit, but I don't know that I would call myself a figure skater. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we have to talk all about that, but ever, let's okay. get back to what we're talking no, no, let's about Let's get today. back to this. But, but anyway, let me get back to this. So, but it's really true. I, because I think people just look at their house and go, well, I just don't have style, but you can't just look at your house and say, I don't have style. I think, uh, you've got to, have you worked on it? Have you tried? And we're going to give you some tips on how to do this because it's not just like you, you can't just, if you've not worked worked on your house. You can't just look around your house and just use that to decide if you have style or not. And you really, it's really something that you can improve. And a lot of people think artistic things you can't improve on, but that absolutely is not true. It is spending time on it. That's how you get better. Absolutely agree. And just can you tell everyone that we are pretty passionate about this particular topic? We've never actually (laughs) drilled down to style. You know, we've talked about different styles of of how to decorate and elements to use, but true style. This is so exciting. I'm, you know, 509 episodes and we're hitting on something that we are just so pa- continually passionate about and passionate about passing it along to you, this passion and excitement and confidence. And I couldn't agree with Anita more. You need to practice. You love interiors like we love interiors. So you want to do this. It's playing. It's not hard work, but have the confidence that you can do it. If you have some failures, guess what? You learn more from your failures than you do when you get it right. So bravo, Mm -hmm. make a note of it, take a picture and don't do that again. A myth to bust right now is style is not dependent on a lot of money, spending a lot of money, having a lot of money, buying luxurious things. That is absolutely not true. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're going to have style. If you have some real constraints like financial constraints, it's going to force you to get very creative. And that creativity usually turns into a really fabulous style. Gather a lot of great ideas buy some decorating books or get some out at the library. Take pictures of the pages that really appeal Ooh, to you. Oh, you're sneaky. Take pictures of the pages. <laughs> well, I don't know. That may be a copyright violation. If I violation, see you in the so aisles at Barnes & Noble and the flash <laughs> is going off, we'll know what you're doing. Well, I- you probably don't need to do that. You can probably just find them on Pinterest. Hey, you know but, what? Um, if you mm-hmm. do it, just don't tell them you heard it here when they catch you. Just don't tell anybody. 
well, I, it might be okay if it's just for your own personal <laughs> use, but you can't like share it with anybody or whatever. But anyway, I don't know what the, anyway, what the copyright rules are on that. Yeah. And if it's really inspiring, you go buy the book because you're going to want it anyway. Go on some home tours. Mm. Maybe if there's a house for sale that you just love the interior, go when they have that Sunday open house. Oh, I love that. And check it out. You have to go beyond your house to get this initial inspiration. I think it's okay to copy certain elements, but what you said, Kelly, I think it's spot on. You do not want to copy somebody start to finish where everything is a copy of somebody else. You definitely want to have your own look, but you've got to start somewhere. And I think copying certain elements of somebody else's style, I think is perfectly acceptable. There's nothing new under the sun. It's just the kind of the way you're going to interpret it. So interpret things, get inspired. Uh, if you like a certain look, there's no reason why you couldn't bring in certain elements of that, but we don't want a carbon copy of what you saw in a magazine or saw on Instagram or saw on a blog or saw in your neighbor's house. So you want to get inspired by everything that's out in the world. It might not be a a room or a home. It might just be a color. It could be a color you see in a flower. It could be the color of uh, the persimmon that's sitting in your fruit bowl or something. You want to get your eyes wide open and all the possibilities that will then become yours. And then you can develop this incredible style. As you go on and you get more and more confidence, and even if you've had some trip ups and some failures, that's going to add to your confidence because you know you can get beyond it. Uh, you, you paint something a certain color and you're like, oh, and you and I have both painted rooms that we didn't like, right? And it, it's just, oh, it's yeah. a heartbreak when it happens and it's not even dry and you know, and then you look the next you morning know. and you know, and then you, you know. just have to do it over, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then you know next time, do not pick a cool yellow. Oh, I did that once. Never going to do that again. Or a soft one. <laughs> <laughs> be very, very careful in those two categories. So yes, yeah, so I are back to that first fabulous tip is that you know you've got to practice. You've got to try it out. And you could try this in small ways. You don't have to say, oh, I'm going to practice by doing over my entire house and throwing out all the furniture I have because I don't think right now I have style. No, start on a small scale. It could be starting with a vignette. You could be playing with three elements, five elements. You could be designing your tray. That then could start to build your confidence and give you the idea of where you want to go with this. You don't have to start big. It can be very small and you don't have to do everything in one day. You don't have to do everything in one year. And certainly you really shouldn't do it all at once, but you can start super small, perfect it on a small scale, get your confidence, see where you're going with it, and then move on. I think this practicing is really important, like you were saying, Kelly. And one of the things that I think people can do is move things from one room to another, move things from one table to another. I like to rotate chairs from, from one room to another. Try a particular chair in all of your rooms. Just rotate them all. Move everything around. I, some things are going to work. Some things aren't. But guess what? This is totally free. Moving something from one room to another, you'll You'll begin to see not only what works best in your house, but you'll begin to kind of pick up what works and what doesn't work in a general sense that you can apply uh, in the future. Uh, as you make these changes, I think it makes an imprint with you and you kind of get a sense of what's working and what's not working. And that is going to serve you very well going forward. And it may not feel like you're learning things, but you are. Along the lines of that, you're learning it. You may not know it. It's kind of like when you're in something, you it's hard to see the bigger picture. Literally and figuratively, step back often. Anybody who's a decorator does this. You do it all the time, Anita. I'm sure. I do it all the time. You arrange something, step back and look. So maybe you have to take a real long step back, the figurative step back, and sort of take it all in as you're going along and you're developing this fabulous style that's just going to blow everybody away. On a smaller scale, you do a bit case. Step back and see what it looks like. You're going to see where you need to change things and where things are really working. And then once you get that going, then you can sort of repeat that over and over in different ways, in different rooms, different areas in the same room. 
Oh, bookcases are so fun to work with because there's so many surfaces. So you can really try so many different things there. That's a great ground to play with. And it's so easy to move things from one shelf to another. I love doing that. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Another thing to think about is, do you have a collection or something in your home that kind of gives you some energy that excites you? Because that's something that you can include as part of your personal style. So for me, it's dishes. Oh, I thought you were going to say ice skating. (laughs) (laughs) No. Not anymore. (laughs) My ice skates are safely tucked away. (laughs) So the dishes are kind of part of my my style. I love them. I love using them. I display them everywhere I can. And I even have favorite kinds. And I've gotten rid of so many dishes. but And so I've been honing my collection. But it's definitely a part of my style. So I'm just going to mention a few other things that are part of my style because I really have kind of a country French leaning, but I call it farmhouse French. Uh, I include kind of a round top feel to it, which is kind of a country or Texas feel to mixed with the French, kind of the rustic with the refined, but also I like to use uh, silver, a lot of silver plated items, Mm -hmm. brain sacks. So these are just kind of my signature things I like to have when I'm decorating a room is I like to have a little silver, maybe a few dishes, maybe some grain sacks that I use for upholstery. These are some things that I like to use. And I know Kelly, I don't know, do you, I'm sure you have a few things that you like to mention. I know you have your white ironstone pictures. That's kind of part of your look. Yeah. And it was interesting. I mean, I know this because I know your style so well, but I never really thought about how we cross over so much. But at the end of the day, our looks are very different. Our color palettes are very different. And we interpret these same things in a different way. So even if anybody who's listening just wanted to go back to our blogs or my YouTube and looked at our houses and could see 
how we've developed our style over time and how we actually overlap so much because you're saying rustic and refined. I clearly do that. Lots of silver. Mine might be more tarnished than yours, but I love that, right? <laughs> and grain sacks definitely make an appearance. Our limited color palettes, although the colors are very different, are very similar. The idea that we like to have a lot of natural light and there's so many overlaps, but it's so interesting how you can take the same element and really mm-hmm. interpret them in very different ways. I have more modern looking pieces, which I've only really started doing in the last, I would say, six or so years as we were doing, I was doing this house. And by the time I got to do the actual decorating, maybe it's only been about three years, but it's been on my mind for a while. I love how the more modern pieces like my Barcelona-esque chaise and some of my more modern side tables and lamps just bang up against and create this tension with the gilded mirrors and the, obviously the interior woodwork and whatnot in my house, the tin ceilings with uh, an arcing gold lamp. I love how that bangs up against each other and it creates this very individual look. I love it too. I think it very much works for you. And there are certain pieces that just seem to work with it, lots of different styles. So this is what we're talking about, kind of you're you're probably drawn to certain pieces and those could be sign, kind of some signature pieces that you use in your design. And, you know, we can't tell you what that is. That's something that you need to go figure out, but it's probably something in your house somewhere. May you, maybe you've been afraid to display it or use it, but it's something that you love a lot. So I bet there's something in your house. So maybe Ooh. that's something to think about. I like that. Maybe add that to the questions that we asked at the beginning. Is there something in your house that you really love that really resonates with you? And maybe you may be afraid or maybe just couldn't figure out how to work it in before. Mm -hmm. Here's another tip coming at you is make sure you're really comfortable with the style. Now, again, of course, it's style with capital S. That's what we're talking about today. It's not whether you're comfortable with mid-century modern and whatnot, but back to developing this style. So don't want to develop a style that really doesn't suit your personality or the way you live your life. And to rift off that, you really want to take into consideration the architecture of your home and the geography. I think that always has to be taken into consideration when you're decorating. But when you're actually developing your signature style, that is really important. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I think you do need to take that into account. But just because your house is a particular you, style doesn't mean you have to follow it exactly. It just needs oh, to Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Clash, not right? that it doesn't. Yeah. Because if it did, I would have doilies and <laughs> things on my table. No, oh, I don't right, mean that right. you have to follow it exactly, but you have to take it into consideration. It can definitely create tension. It can be a little bit different, but it's got to work with it. Yes. And I think it's important to know the trends, but then really do your own thing. Uh, I think it's fine to go against the trends. And sometimes you're going to make more of a bold. I mean, it's definitely more bold to not follow the trends. But your style is going to be feel more unique and more unusual if you don't follow the trends. And a lot of times that's kind of more of a way to kind of become a style maker than following a trend. You know, it's really kind of about creating your own style rather than following others. Because if you're constantly following the trends, then you're just following what everyone else is doing. And that's kind of the opposite of what we're talking about. I think it's good to know what they are. So if you kind of go a different direction, just be aware that you're doing that. Right. Well, knowledge is power just like in anything, but it really is good to know, be aware of what's going on out there. And, you know, you love this stuff, everybody. So you're going to want to know that. And we tell you all the time what the trends are. And you're definitely going to want to personalize it. That is the hallmark of style. So where practice, practice, practice is going to get you there. The hallmark of having an individual style is to personalize it. And that doesn't mean you have to have a giant gallery wall of pictures of your entire family from the minute someone was born until they graduated from college and all those things. You need to personalize it in a way that works for you. Someone might come into your house and not even know that that is a particularly personal item or is so meaningful for whatever reason. 
i.e. it doesn't have to be a photograph or something that's just so glaringly of your past. It can be something you picked up in your travels. It can be a shell that found on the beach. It can be a bunch of crystals. It can be whatever, but something that speaks to you. So we talked a lot about taking a risk, areas to take a risk, color, buying an antique, or one of Nita's favorite things, ditching something you really don't like. That could be a risk too. (laughs) Just get rid of it. Haul it out because it might completely change your style. Now, we're not even just talking about the look of a room. It just might completely enable you, if you had this albatross in your house, to take a different direction and really achieve the style that you were destined to have. Listen, this resale furniture is got rocking prices these days. Yeah. So if you're going to sell something, do it now. Right. And the last thing I would suggest as a tip is buy less and buy better. So as mm. we said, you don't have to have buckets of cash to develop a gorgeous style for yourself. Just let me underline it. You really don't have to. <laughs> and you that really don't have great. to buy a lot of things. Buy less things and buy better things. And know you're only going to get better at this because you're going to take our first and foremost tip and to practice, practice, practice. And you're going to get it. If you don't think you have style now, we know you will. And we know you probably do already. Absolutely. Okay, so who's your style icon? You want everybody to check out, Anita. So I was really kind of looking for someone with a very unique look. So I thought of Paula Sutton at Hill House Vintage Mm -hmm. on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because she has a very personal style and her house has a very unique style. So she dresses in vintage clothing. She has a gorgeous home in the English countryside. It's full of vintage and antique furniture. It looks beautiful. Uh, She's often photographed outside with a picnic or on her vintage bicycle. And she always has a big smile. Mm -hmm. I would say that's part of her style is that she always has a big smile. I'll include a link to her uh, Instagram page. But I think you're just going to get a smile when you look at it. And she definitely has a very unique style that's very beautiful. So my style icon, and we, we're we all style icons or would-be style icons, but India Hicks is somebody oh, who just yes. lives a really beautiful life. I mean, sure, she is related to royalty and her father was the famous designer David Hicks, but, you know... Anybody can develop style. And she was a bridesmaid or, I don't know, flower girl at Princess Diana's wedding. Well, yes, because she's the cousin to Prince Charles. So she sh- yeah. she should have said, Diana, maybe think twice. But India is, she just seems like somebody that you would want to sit down and have a cup of tea with or maybe a beer or a glass of wine. She just seems like a really real person mm-hmm. despite mm-hmm. her uh, you know her background and her upbringing i think that she is somebody that everybody should check out she just makes everything look so effortless mm-hmm. oh it's beautiful her home is english country the way we love it then she also has homes in the bahamas and i think spends most of the year there recently i received my issue of flower magazine and there she is on the cover she recently oh. married her would-be husband, her partner of 26 years. They just never got married. They have five kids together and they decided during the pandemic to do it. And so you'll definitely enjoy that article. And if that's your first introduction to her, it's a great one. She also has several books. I think she has five books to her name. Definitely fall down India Hicks rabbit hole. You're going to learn a lot just looking at it and nothing is going to scream at you like, I designed this this way. It's just, it just all, it's that thing. It's the je ne sais quoi. It's that you can't even put your finger on it, but it just feels right when you see it. She has true style. I adore her, her homes and she's very elegant. Very elegant. So, yes. Yeah. So they, and both of these style icons have very different looks. So yes. That's absolutely right. So what is our challenge step today? Uh, Today is step five. So in the previous step, kind of nailed your aesthetic. So now you're going to decide what you want to keep for your new look and what you're going to get rid of. And you're going to make a wish list of what you want. You might not be able to buy everything right away, but you definitely want a list of what you want to buy and what you want to sell or give away. And right now we're just making lists. So we're not actually selling or 
buying anything right now. It's just kind of a list of what you're going to keep, what you're going to give away, what you're going to sell. Perfect. I love making lists. I love shopping a oh, little good. more, but I do love making lists. <laughs> and the DTT defines is? Pearl core. This is an iridescent. So it's kind of an, something that you can put in your house that has kind of a pearly feel to it. So it might be some tiles oh. or maybe a tray, but something that's got that iridescence like a pearl does. Like capiz, would that count? I think, well, I would count that, sure. Very pretty. And if anybody doesn't know, capiz is kind of like a mo- mother of pearly material. You see a lot of sorry, chandeliers in that. Wow. Okay. Is that like cottage core? Like what's with the core thing? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Pearl core. I like it. I think I would like to add a little bit of that. It's good to have a little shimmer. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to DoseDaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt pesto pork chops over parmesan polenta not that easy to say but oh so easy to make with green chef green chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well and we have such a great deal for you you're going to save 250 dollars. listen on for the details on that green chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle whether you're keto paleo vegan vegetarian gluten-free or just looking to eat more balanced meals you know we're getting into the busy holiday season so it's a perfect time to have green chef help you out Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So my crush is the great grow along. And I received an email from a lovely woman about this event and I checked it out and I wanted to share it with everyone. So it hasn't happened yet. So it's something I'm going to be enjoying along with you. It starts March 11th through the 20th and it's a 10 day virtual event with 40 speakers. There are going to be tons of garden content for all levels of gardener, some DIY, some education, even some happy hours. And I went through the list of the speakers and I know a f- several people that are going to speak, but personally, I know Stephanie Rose and I love Stephanie Rose from Garden Therapy. And Stephanie was a guest on our podcast, so I can actually link the podcast episode where I interviewed her and had a great time chatting with her. 
Stephanie's a great speaker, and I bet that all the other people are going to be amazing speakers. So it's absolutely free if you listen uh, live, but if you want to purchase a six-month pass and then you can listen on your leisure, it's like $29 or something like that. So what a deal. But if you want to listen to anything live, March 11th through 20th, the link will be in the show notes to The Great Grow Along. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I know. Isn't that wonderful? My crush links in with our DTT challenge. I'm going to include a link to Paula Dean's living room tour. She just moved into a house she hasn't lived in for a while and completely redid the kitchen and the living room. And the living room, I think, is done very nicely. So I'm going to link to that since we're doing the DTT living room challenge. Oh, perfect. Okay, fun stuff to look at. And if anybody is participating in the challenge, feel free to tag us. If not, go on your own pace. Yes, please tag us. Uh, Kelly is my, at my soulful home and I'm at Cedar Hill farmhouse. So give us a tag and we'll, we'll comment and cheer you on along the way. Yes. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.